Working together, we can beat the coronavirus. A message from government. Feel the heat. I love Adam Selman. The girls are really thin. I think it looks very glamorous from the outside. The life of a model in New York City. There is such cool prints. So many. You know, I'm buying this. Look at me and all the selfie sort of thing. Honestly, I didn't really know that was actually a job. It just didn't occur to me. Congratulations. Feel the excitement. Feel the heat with Starset. Feel the heat. Just watch this. Let the pictures tell you everything. Feel the excitement. That was delightful. Feel the heat with Starset. Feel the heat. Chicken portions are an easy way to feed a crowd. I've just started to incorporate all my ingredients. We're going to put this inside of a hot cast iron skillet. You want to really fill up on great protein. It's now time to sample the chef's dish. Mm -hmm. Look at this. I know. Like that? Feel the excitement. The chicken is on the spot. Feel the heat with Starset. Feel the heat. The day will come when these measures are no longer needed. Until then, however, we must ensure that all our people receive adequate support. We look ahead to a better future. I have faith in the strength and the resilience of ordinary South Africans who have proven time and time again throughout our history that they can rise to any challenge that is presented to our country. We shall recover. We shall overcome.
Hello. Being a legal practitioner in South Africa in these challenging times demands lawyers that will help clients beyond legal issues. The ever-changing demands in commerce and tourism require lawyers who have sound and clear business and commercial knowledge. And that's where MB Chaba Good Incorporated comes in. Our business, mining, tourism, health, labor, and economic knowledge encapsulated with law and litigation experience gives us an advantage in the legal sphere. Our experience in assisting businesses, government, and various industries with their needs puts us amongst the many progressive and striving law firms in South Africa. Now, to contact our attorneys for assistance with any of the mentioned fields and others, please call us on 012-341-4187 or send us an email on admin at chabanku.co.za and be Chabanku Incorporated, where problems meet solutions. The power to defeat coronavirus is in our hands. Play your part by following these five basic precautions. Regularly wash your hands with soap and water or sanitizer for at least 20 seconds. Maintain a safe distance of at least one and a half meters from people around you. Wear a cloth mask at all times when in public. Always cough or sneeze into your elbow or tissue. If you're an employer, screen your employees daily for symptoms of COVID-19 and where appropriate, refer for testing. Working together, we can beat the coronavirus. A message from government. This is Galaxy Prime. Thank you so much for staying with us. We certainly appreciate it. My name is Audrey Chimanda Twala. We're coming to you live from our Medran studios here in Johannesburg. You're watching Galaxy Universal Network. We are on channel 500. Now, before uh, the break, I promised you that we'll be speaking to a presidential candidate uh, of uh, Benin. We get to find out a bit more about him, what his aspirations are, his background, and uh, what policies that he hopes to implement in the West African nation. Just a brief um, uh, recap of uh, who our, our guest is. is called uh, Mr. Ladislas Akhbesi. He is a businessman. He is also a chairperson of the African Union Pan-African Business Forum. And he's also on the advisory board for APSA Gauteng in South Africa. Like I said, uh, for the purpose of this interview, we'll be speaking uh, specifically about his ambitions of being uh, the president of Benin. You're at home. Welcome to joining the conversation. Our social media platform are, welcome, are there for you to interact with us and engage us. Would love to hear from you, so please uh, do say something if you're watching from wherever you are. So thank you so much for joining us. It's always a pleasure to be in your wonderful studio and uh, it looks like uh, the continent is growing very well. Oh yes, absolutely. Uh, the media space is being opened as you can see and we're proud to be a part of that, uh, a part of that space. Interesting, yeah. Yes. Um, as I was giving an introduction uh, about you, quite a number of hats that you wear there. Uh, could you just give us a brief uh, syn synopsis of, I know you're a banker, that is, the, that is your, um, your background, uh, going over now to being a presidential candidate for Benin elections that are slated for February 2021, correct? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, basically, you know, I, I am an African, uh, you know, like uh, many a time, uh, uh, there is a renowned former president in South Africa who said, uh, my identity is who I am. And uh, I first of all, identify myself as uh, an African hmm. and uh, Beninua of origin and uh, by extension Ghanaian. And uh, I look at uh, myself as a proud African in all aspects. Hmm. Um, I, I want us to talk about a number of issues that Africa is facing. I know that uh, you, um, I don't know if you're a founder of the Pan-African Business Forum uh, that is uh, to fast track the socio-economic development of the economy by lobbying for a better business environment, investment climate. Do you think it gives you a leg ahead of the, the troubles that Africa faces, especially now in the climate of COVID-19 economically? De definitely, you know, uh, the Pan-Africa Business Forum is a coalition for the reinforcement of investment for Africa. It's a coalition who devised some of the policy in, which is integrated through the African Union and, uh, and uh, regional uh, integration in some of the general institution, institutions. And uh, I think that uh, having worked many times with those uh, uh, regional uh, bodies and the African Union and uh, being part and parcel of policies and uh, engaging those institutions, I think... Uh, if you look at where we come from as an Africa, as Africa, 
and uh, looking at uh, African Union and uh, seeing the, the passage of uh, Kosovo and Damien Zuma as one of the greatest ladies who have uh, lived a great uh, impact in African Union. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the journey is not bad, but still there's a lot to do. Yeah. I look at you and uh, some would say you look very young to be a presidential <laughs> hopeful. Um, just before you joined us, we're reading a story about Uganda, Yoweda Museveni, who's bidding for his fourth term in office, I think 40 years of wanting to rule. You know, we have an issue of a lifetime presidents in Africa. Do you think age has anything to do with leadership when we see young people such as yourselves wanting to take up that space? I, I think uh, I was telling uh, earlier on to some people, uh, Age, uh, youth matters a lot, you know, because of the capacity which is uh, demand from the leadership of the person. And, uh, you know, you can't be a president is to be able to have your brain to anticipate a multitask. Mm. And uh, after 65, you cannot be able to do that. And uh, we will encourage that uh, people uh, look behind and uh, choose among the youth to lead because uh, leadership needs all full capacity to be able to deliver. Mm. And in terms of investment, a lot of countries, I'll, I'll put Zimbabwe for an example, and I'm sure you've heard this quite a number of times, that are trying to re-engage with the West, you know, to get investors to come aboard, on board. And it's not just Zimbabwe, but a lot of African countries to have investors from the West or from the East come on board and try to revive the economy, but with conditions that are, of course, favorable. South Africa at the moment has uh, been approved uh, for a fund from the IMF, IMF yes, yes. and some people say that uh, perhaps it's a sign of, of times that are not so good for the country. What are your thoughts with regards to that? Uh, let me start with uh, the context of Africa. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, let us be uh, generous to uh, uh, IMF in some points. Uh, you know, the, through the such adjustment program, there is m a many uh, kind of a program who have been put in place who enable 38 African countries to qualify for the, uh, the adjustment program, which help them to manage the public debt and uh, their growth and, uh, and the deficit. Mm. So that one have allowed many African countries to tap into the euro bond on the international market uh, to access some kind of uh, money for themselves. But uh, it doesn't leave them there. Today, if you look at the growth which was proje projected for Africa, which is uh, uh, 2008 uh, for the Sub-Sahara, which was uh, uh, 2.5 2018, and uh, 2019 was so uh, 2.6, and uh, this year we have uh, the greatest recession in a decade because of COVID. But the problem with Africa is that to an uh, anticipate an uh, African solution, reform which is integrated in our, our uh, mindset, which uh, speak to our culture, mm -hmm. which will enable us to move to the, the, the next level. So we have to say that uh, uh, corruption is the one of the key things which is uh, quite uh, 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 rampant in Africa. 50 billion each year in illicit uh, which live the, the continent. There must be a lot of mechanism which is put in place. South Africa have done a, a, great, a, great, a great job in that uh, regard. Uh, many African countries, uh, less, uh, more than 60 percent of them are still uh, in that kind of uh, a paradigm shift, which is uh, where the corruption is uh, a, a greater. You can't talk about uh, growth reform when you don't talk about uh, how much live our continent. Mm. So the youth, the new generation of uh, entrepreneurs which are coming, we need to see into them entrepreneurs who have been able to achieve something, mm. who have been able to, to deal with uh, uh, crisis, challenges, in terms of uh, personal challenges, business challenges, and the political challenges. And that enable them to understand that the, the, the dichotomy in terms of leadership, what it, it, what it takes right. to, to get there. So that's why we, we believe that uh, you cannot be a Benin around Nigeria and not integrate your economy into Nigeria. Mm. That's how we said that uh, Benin, uh, Benin is just a country. By the way, I, I was talking three years ago in Geneva, telling many of the panel that uh, times have gone for countries, small countries in Africa. We need to close small countries. Lesotho, Swaziland, those little, little countries, it makes the people to suffer. We need to integrate them. So. If you look at Benin near Nigeria, it's a good one, but I tell the government of Nigeria, mm. please, I want to be the CEO of Nigeria, uh, of Benin. <laughs> this is a 37 <laughs> economy. What we need for our people, we must think about uh, the well-being of our people. Uh, infrastructure, education, healthcare, that's the most important. And uh, build a strong business case for our country. Not being just presidents because you want to be 
traveling, sitting in a, in a fancy car, but uh, we can still turn the business of the politics of today into business. Mm. That's why I believe that uh, Africa Union is trying, but they are not doing much. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I want us to address this right off the bat. You spoke of political challenges. Um, the previous um, elections that were held in Benin, um, I understand um, the incumbent, Patrice Talon, um, seemed to have sidelined quite a bit of the opposition, the major opposition parties, the representatives that wanted to take part in those elections. Um, how do you plan on uh, circumventing that? How do you deal with that? But at the moment, uh, uh, the, 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 the opposition in Benin is... Uh, uh, regrouping, we talking to the stakeholders, uh, international criminal courts, we're talking to the European Union, the World Bank, sanctions in terms of, you know, when you talk about uh, prosperity for a country, is a, is cohabitation, working together, opposition and everybody together. Even in business, is when there is a competition where you do better. But if there's no competition, you cannot do better. Uh, we have our economy which is run by uh, a group of uh, small people. And uh, in uh, our country, a president who put our former president to uh, in a house of arrest for 52 years, he's silent, there's no opposition in our country. The corruption is at peaks. Uh, the, the economy, 75% of the economy belongs to him. Our ports authority, uh, there is a company who belongs to the president who collects the revenue on behalf of the, the country. <laughs> and uh, nothing moved in the country. Uh, everybody left the country. He chased almost everybody out of the the, the country uh, overseas, and uh, it is uh, a concern for the for the ECOWAS. Mm -hmm. We have a discussion, and the COVID came and uh, put a stop on the discussion, and they requested that uh, we should meet after the COVID to rediscuss the position of where we are in, uh, in Benin. Right. There is an election coming over in Benin, which is not recognized by the opposition, uh, by the way, and uh, we're looking at uh, at the moment uh, we are thinking about putting up in. Uh, 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 a government of uh, 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 unity in place. National unity. A yes. national unity in place. In the, by uh, May next year, there will be a government of uh, national unity in place, which you... Uh, this is what you're hoping for? Yeah, that's what we... we, 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 we no, not, not something we're hoping for. It's something which has been discussed with uh, the, the stake parties, from uh, all stake parties in the mm. ECOWAS, everybody. So we are looking forward for that. Is President Talon coming to the table to make sure that there's a level playing field for all the participants that want to be a part of these, of these elections? Are you guaranteed that you'll have a level playing field? No, but uh, we've uh, had a certain discussion with uh, mm. uh, the ECOWAS. They've met him several times. They said the envoy from the, uh, 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 the United Nations to him. He didn't listen to them. Uh, the ECOWAS sent somebody to him. He didn't listen to them. They request for him to do a dialogue. He didn't do it. Uh, so the ECOWAS told us that uh, with, uh, in partnership with the European Union that uh, we should allow them to, to start this dialogue after the COVID. Mm. And uh, uh, I'll be going, to the, uh, going back to the country and uh, meet with the opposition parties and we'll have a dialogue over there where we will put up a new uh, government in place. Right. And uh, we'll take a very short break. Do stay with us. This conversation continues soon after this. Feel the heat. I love Adam Selman. The girls are really thin. I think it looks very glamorous from the outside. The life of a model in New York City. There is such cool prints. So many. You know, I'm buying this. Look at me and all the selfie sort of thing. Honestly, I didn't really know that was actually a job. It just didn't occur to me. Congratulations. Feel the excitement. Feel the heat with Starset. Feel the heat. Just watch this. Let the pictures tell you everything. the excitement that was delightful feel the heat with starset feel the heat chicken portions are an easy way to feed a crowd i've just started to incorporate all my ingredients we're going to put this inside of a hot cast iron skillet you want to really fill up on great protein it's now time to sample the chef's dish mm -hmm. look at this i know like that Feel the excitement. Michigan is on the spot. Feel the heat with Starset. 
Well, welcome back to the program. We hope you managed to get yourselves a glass of water or a cup of coffee as you join us in this conversation uh, with the presidential hopeful, Mr. Ladislas Achbesi. He is in conversation with us. Uh, we're talking to him about the policies that he hopes uh, Benin will be able to realize should, be, should he be elected into power. Um, now, so we, we, let's take a look at where Benin is positioned. I mean, we see the, um, the, the violence that is happening across to your, your neighbors in Nigeria yeah. in certain parts of that country um, with Boko Haram issues that seem to not being able to, to be solved up, up until now. What role do you think the region plays in trying to, to silence the guns, as um, the AU would call it? I, I must say, first of all, I need to mm -hmm. thank uh, uh, congratulate the Af uh, West Africa body, ECOWAS, for doing a lot. I was uh, last year, I think October, in a summit in uh, Ouagadougou for fight against uh, terrorism and the mechanism which is put in place. And we need to also uh, thank the partners, which is uh, uh, Middle East, Abu Dhabi, uh, Saudi Arabia, those people who care a lot for Africa, who have been uh, putting a lot of resources to assist us to fight those kind of uh, issues in uh, Africa. And, uh, and uh, most and uh, we will have uh, the partners like uh, European Union, the World Bank, uh, everybody coming in. However, we need also to give uh, a great uh, uh, salute to President Buhari for under his leadership as a lot of work has been done in that kind of uh, regard, mm -hmm. fight against the terrorists. And, uh, but the, the most important we need to look at is collaboration among countries. And uh, Benin play a greater role uh, as a, a country near Nigeria. We are the apex of uh, Nigeria. We contribute uh, close to 15% of the GDP of Nigeria. Uh, 65% of the population of Nigeria depend on Benin. They are closer to us, which is active for business and everything. But we need to collaborate together. Benin is anticipating to be the center of uh, intelligence and the fight against those uh, uh, Terror terrorists. Yeah, yes, because uh, we believe that uh, there is a frame which our previous government, from the President Kereku, uh, Yaiboni, have put certain kind of uh, mechanism in place. And uh, I'm, in the, I'm in the discussion with some African countries, uh, uh, Middle East, uh, uh, European countries, to put a, a, a base in a Benin to curve that kind of a pandemic in, a, in, in West Africa. Mm. You know, Benin can be the center like uh, Israel to, to experiment a certain kind of a, a methodology, how to fight the, the, uh, uh, the terrorists and those Boko Haram. And, uh, Boko Haram issue, you must look at it from different points of view. There's issue of poverty, which uh, some of the partner uh, development are helping to push a lot of investment into it. The other uh, issue is about the training of our youth, giving them some training, which mm. is uh, we are going to emphasize a lot on, the, on it to put a lot of uh, job for them. The third one is uh, have uh, a very sound uh, defense force. You cannot be a great nation without defense force. And uh, this is one of the things in my mind that uh, uh, the three pillars who defend, my, who carry my uh, vision for Benin is going to be one of the pillars is about uh, Benin, making Benin a, not just uh, a greatest defense uh, 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 state for the region, for uh, also for the continent. Mm. Because having worked with uh, South Africa, working with uh, the whole continent, I believe that uh, African Union is taking a long time to set up uh, a, a special force for African Union. But uh, my coming who who speed up the process of putting a special forces in Africa. Right. You cannot be a great uh, continent if you don't have your own forces. And I think the Saudi Arabia is doing something very well, mm. looking at uh, supporting Africa to, to get those things in place. Africa needs his own security. We don't need to rely always on uh, United Nations security forces, but uh, we can elaborate mechanism to put money in place. Mm to set up our special forces for Africa. Right. Yes, this is great. Yeah, but Nigeria has looked to the West uh, with regards to trying to find some kind of security, the security forces and trying to fight Boko Haram. And I keep referring to them because I understand whatever happens in Nigeria could yeah. have a ripple yeah. effect yeah. to yeah. Benin and uh, you're alluding to that yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, in doing my research, I understand you have quite a bit of connections when yeah. it comes to the West. Would you yeah. tell us about that and how you plan on utilizing your connections to make sure that uh, they can assist if they can without, of course, compromising 
recognizing the sovereignty of African states, as we've seen with a lot of countries, they always say, you know, when we get help from the West or from, from Europe, there's always conditions that are attached to that. I, I need to tell you something. I, uh, some of us, we grew up in West Africa and understanding the geopolitics of Africa. Uh, President Buhari is a very smart guy and uh, he will never compromise the, the security of, uh, uh, of his country, neither of West Africa or neither the continent. Partnership means that uh, we help each other to advance our vision to, to, to keep the, 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 the terrorists. I, uh, I believe that uh, the, the engagement which is done in that area is in, the, is, is, the, is, is in the right direction for us in West Africa. But however... You mean West Africa and the United States? In, in That's United what States, I mean. Yes, yes. Yeah. Because you know the problem with the United States at the moment is that uh, after the Iraq war, they've left. There is a, a lot of things which left over there. They, want to, mm -hmm. they are talking to many African countries where they can support us to fight. It's not only in Nigeria. They're talking to South Africa. They're talking to many other African countries. In terms of uh, deployment of uh, those equipment over there, it's something which is not, uh, they are not imposing on us, but they are coming in partnership, training our people and give those equipment for us. We have, like, for instance, in South Africa, they bought uh, a lot of equipment from South Africa. I don't want to mention of them. And they don't need the use for, of it. So they, 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 they're looking for a way of uh, enhance partnership with uh, good countries, which can, uh, can uh, use it efficiently. So I believe that uh, uh, you cannot do without partnership. But however, I came back to what I just said. Uh, my generation of uh, leadership coming to power, we are emphasizing on, on our own African forces. You know, because to care for coup, to care for instabilities, because if we don't have a serious force, you see, China can uh, meet uh, any challenge from the West. Mm. Uh, you, you look at uh, North Korea, you look at uh, Russia and everything. But Africa, we have 54 countries. We can't stand anybody. Even South Africa, the people in the army here, all of them want tenders. <laughs> 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 and people don't want to stay in the army. But uh, just to say that uh, Africa, the next thing which is key for us in, in the continent to build a strong defense capacity. Uh, air to the ground and technology mm -hmm. so that we own it, so that we can be able to, to talk to the other partners in the same level. Yeah. And I believe that uh, we still have uh, great people in the continent who can uh, emulate those kind of uh, discussions yeah. for us. Um, you spoke of uh, having the United States coming in to partner and help. Let's yeah. take a look at what happened to the Libya, the crisis that is still there right now. They came and they left, and it is a mess right there. How do we partner with the United States in making sure that um, when they do leave, you know, it's, it's a pro progressive um, way of partnership? You know, I always tell people that uh, uh, don't look at uh, African Union you know, the president. Talk to people like us in the continent because... Uh, uh, understanding the, the environment and the policy, the geopolitics is very important. I still believe that uh, the, the aim of uh, uh, America is in the right direction to fight autocracy. But uh, do they have the real intelligence on the ground to deal with Gaddafi? That's a question we need to ask ourselves. We saw Hillary Clinton who apologized that they did it, what they did was wrong. We saw Obama who is a big brother, uh, a, big brother a friend. Uh, to mine, who also said that uh, they were ill at advice. Imagine if they were able to talk to intermediary partners, to integrate the intermediary partners. Today we see, we believe that uh, next time we will not do things the same way. Mm. President Siri uh, 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 Ramaphosa spoke to uh, Haftar in uh, uh, Libya. I encourage him to talk to him, but I also encourage him to talk to the family of uh, 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 Mama Gaddafi, because uh, today the military people have tried in Libya for many years. Nothing has been successful. Mm. So I believe that the family of uh, uh, Mama Gaddafi, through the son, I, 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 I think that uh, he's looking for, they must give him a chance, give a chance to everybody. Because people have been fighting for 10 years, no results. Half time is fighting for 10 years, no result. Mm. Every day there's fight. But let us give a, 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 a chance to somebody who have the, back, the, the backup of the, the whole continent, 
known by the whole continent and who want to reconcile the uh, 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 Libya, put mm. Libyans together, mm. people who accept him. This is what we want to see in Africa. This is a new generation of our, right. our leaders. So you're speaking of African solutions to African of problems. Of course, that's what I'm trying to say, mm. is that uh, we need to have so, uh, African solution. Like, uh, it's, it's a very good uh, step for President uh, Cyril Ramaphosa to speak to after. Has he spoken to the main person, which is uh, uh, our, uh, the, the, the family of Gaddafi? No. Which, which is uh, the, the, the key part of the whole issues. No. Mm. You need to talk to them uh, to bring everybody together. We want democracy. We don't want war anymore. We don't want people to... We've tried with the military. Uh, Gaddafi also was a military. Now, we don't want that anymore. So let us start looking at a different kind of perspective. But talk to the stakeholder. Africa's solution is the most important for us. We mm. can't rely on uh, 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 outside... Uh, 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 Intervention, yeah. yeah intervention. So you're saying while they mean well, when they come in, they need to understand the nuances of the political landscape that they're trying to assist. So they know how to be able to assist in mediating uh, in, in uh, trying to find solutions. De definitely, definitely. It's, you know, the, the, the problem is that uh, Africa is not innovative. They are not aggressive. There's the loyalty does not exist anymore. You see, how can you put sanction in uh, Zimbabwe and all of you still go to United Nations. You can't do that. If I'm a president and you put sanction on Mugabe, I will not go to United Nations. So there should be that so, solidarity with African uh, leaders. Attack on one of us is attack on all of us. Mm. That's why in Benin, when the president of Benin killed our people and didn't allow opposition to go to, to election, he's my friend. I said, no, you're not my friend. Attack on one of us, attack on all of us. If you put sanction on any African countries, all of us have to be against you. But then how, th how then does South Africa then go and ask for money from the IMF if then you're speaking ill of uh, you know, people that are giving you a hand at donations? No, so they have to balance those, those but, differences uh, as well. In the case of South Africa, it's a different be because uh, I heard the, the partners of uh, uh, South Africa uh, government, which is the, the other partners, was uh, making a bit of noise. You know, despite the, you know, the COVID have created the biggest recession in, uh, in, uh, in Africa, the Sub-Sahara. And uh, we've seen uh, damage in terms of uh, jobs, productivity, and everything. But still, South Africa is still relevant. If you look at a report from Dutch Bank, Goldman Sachs, all of them still recommend people to buy the South African bond. Mm. It's, it's, there's still hope in South Africa. The other thing also is that uh, in terms of uh, the package which is being given from the IMF and the World Bank, South Africa got the biggest one, which is 4.3 billion, and uh, Africa, uh, African Development Bank gave them some. You see, Nigeria got 3.4, uh, and uh, uh, Algeria 2.1, and uh, you you see that uh, there's still something, despite every, everything is happening. What South Africa have received is called emergency fund, not to support. It's an emergency fund. So which, there's a difference. It's obviously. a difference, yeah. Because when the people are uh, fighting, it's not uh, a fund which is uh, attract a structure adjustment uh, 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 criteria where you have to live with a structure adjustment uh, uh, bedding. It's an emergency fund to help to cover the, the health uh, emergency, a certain kind of uh, a priority for the government, because it's a huge economy. You understand? Mm -hmm. And uh, if you see how the bond is uh, fluctuating and uh, everything in the country, South Africa have responded uh, very good to the, to the pandemic. However, however, I still think that uh, the government of South Africa, as a big player in, in a SADC, supposed to integrate eh, the plate of Zimbabwe and other country when it comes to him to deal with uh, they, you know, we are one. We are family. Well, the issue of the sanctions, they've been vocal about it. They've been lobbying for the years to uh, remove the sanctions on Zimbabwe. Whether they've done enough is, um, you know, something that needs to be looked at. But I, they have spoken about I think the African Union need to take a, a decisive decision to cancel all the debt of Zimbabwe. Because if you continue like that, there will not be a country in the next seven years. Mike, my wife. Seven to 20 years, there will not be a country in Zimbabwe. African Union, African development, they need to make an emergency meeting and go together with the government of Zimbabwe in front of IMF, European Union. They've done it in other countries. What they call, other people call it Masha. We don't call it Masha. We can call it uh, Shaka Zulu uh, 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 program. Mm -hmm. We need to sit down with them and say, we don't trade with you. 
Until this is resolved. Did, until this is resolved, because yeah. uh, so, if, so if, perhaps they, they they're counting on the disunity of Africa. Uh, it, that's why we. This is why they can impose the sanctions and not get any consequences from anyone else, because other countries still need to trade with the West and they still need to maintain those relationships. You, you know, uh, there's something we call in French, in French, uh, ganglion lymphatique. When you have uh, a sore in your leg and the other leg doesn't make sure that you don't feel it in the body to deal with it, they'll cut the two legs. If South Africa, which is a giant in Sub-Sahara, doesn't talk about an emergency meeting to deal with that situation, you know very well that in South Africa, three to eight percent of the, the middle class people into the, uh, into the uh, workers are from Zimbabwe. In the financial sector, I've worked with them. These are the smart guys who are working here. But you cannot sit, the, the economy are intertwined. Language, culture, everything is intertwined. So you need to integrate them because uh, the GDP of, uh, of uh, uh, Zimbabwe responds to how the growth of South Africa works. Right. Because they are intertwined. So if you don't do anything, you destroy your economy. You, insecurity will be high. So the South African, uh, uh, how do you call it, uh, the three-party alliances need to sit down, which mm -hmm. is the governing body of South Africa, to make a decisive decision to deal with that kind of uh, problem. And that uh, if, uh, if uh, there is no economy in, uh, in uh, Zimbabwe, the growth of South Africa will be cut into two. At the moment, it's 0 0.9, less than that, 0 0.5. It will be 0 0.01. And uh, what happened? The growth is no more there. The GDP is depleted. Everybody live in security. Right. So this is what the people need to to anticipate in the, in the future in terms of leadership. And uh, leadership is not just meeting, meeting, but uh, focus, think uh, ahead. Mm, have uh, foresight. Foresight, yeah, that's quite uh, important. Mm. And I've been saying it, I have uh, opportunity to meet uh, uh, Mugabe, I have opportunity to meet uh, Manangagwa. The two people are for me great people. And uh, I don't want to differentiate between the two people. And uh, I still think that uh, if uh, a bit of uh, of uh, oxygen is given to Zimbabwe, it will change the whole SADC. Because of, right. there are people of capacity, smart, great people. They can make the change. What do you then say to the human rights um, record that really is appalling that has been coming from uh, countries like Zimbabwe? It's the part of the conditions for the sanctions to be removed. It appears Zimbabwe has not been able to um, to rectify that. We still hear of a lot of people getting abducted and killed. August 1st, two years ago, people were shot with live ammunition in front of international media soon after elections. How do you how do you deal with that? I, 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 uh, with my... Uh and my little experience, I, I still believe that the human right uh, is uh, intertwined with the poverty. When there is no money, there's a poverty. There's still issue of uh, a disproportionality, discriminations. And uh, because uh, Zimbabwe needs reforms, the World Bank is not putting so much money for them to, to, to anticipate their reform. You need to, what is a country needs is about the capacity building. You need to come and uh, participate in the capacity building. But if the people don't have, they have to survive. How do they go to school? How do they build the, 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 the issue you are talking about? I'm not here to defend the government, mm -hmm. but I'm just here to say that uh, law and order are issue of development and poverty. If there's money, people, if people have a better life, you don't have law and disorder in the country. Speaking of human rights, you said you have the ear of uh, former President Barack Obama um, with the crisis that we saw happening in Libya during his term, yeah. his presidential term. Some yeah. say that um, it is easy for African leaders to be held accountable when it comes to human rights abuses. He came in with his army and millions of people were killed in Libya. Still up to now, the country is in tatters. What responsibility does he take? I actually think that Obama is, doesn't have a responsibility. The person who has a responsibility uh, we, we all know who was leading that uh, program. He called uh, 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 NATO as a, uh, how do you call it, uh, 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 as a partner. He called the U.S. to support them because uh, you must understand in the global world, they mm -hmm. help each other whenever there's a crisis. NATO. And the French was, uh, with uh, Sarkozy was uh, in power that time. He had a crisis in Libya and he wanted to deal with it. And uh, the, the Americans came in. But the person who was leading it was the French government. 
And uh, I think the French government have changed position now. They are now understanding what is happening in Libya now. And uh, I think things will be different. But uh, putting the blame on Obama, I don't think so. Because uh, somebody who acknowledged that uh, there was a mistake there, he have said it publicly. Because, uh, you know, part, they are partners. That's what Africa don't have. They are partners. And they are in the same body. So if uh, France is helping uh, America in a certain kind of uh, fight against terrorism, and uh, uh, France need them, they need to work together. But we don't do that. That's what I'm talking about Zimbabwe. I'm mm -hmm. talking about Benin. We need to work together. So I still think that uh, Obama was not uh, so aggressive because this is his continent. People think that he's been too much, uh, too inclined with Africa because he's an African. But uh, I think, I still believe that uh, because he's, uh, he's uh, our brother, is already, for him to be a president is, uh, is a grace for us. And I think that uh, uh, in terms of uh, human rights in uh, uh, Libya today, we will blame it on the, on the government of French. The, all the government who are over there because we were able to tell them, don't do it. South Africa, under the leadership of President Zuma, said, no, let us discuss. They didn't listen to them. The ANC fought for it, said, let us have another discussion. The same thing. So we think that uh, the African leadership need to have uh, a, a strong, strong decision. They need to stand together. They need to stand strong together. Strong sense of unity. Yeah, sense of unity. Mm. So today, what we are seeing in Libya, for this not to happen again, we need to talk to all the parties. You can't do, talk to the parties without talking to the family of uh, uh, Gaddafi. They are relevant. And especially when the family, uh, through his son, want to reconcile the, the two, the, uh, 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 Libya. Give him a chance. Let us have election. Let us have election over there. Let's allow people to speak. But we've tried with uh, uh, some general who keep on spending money with another general we don't want Africa doesn't need war now we need to start talking about uh, reconciliation in Libya our next agenda is about reconciliation with the family of Gaddafi because uh, when South Africa did the truth reconciliation who were the people at the table at the truth reconciliation it was the people who killed our black people how can you do truth reconciliation without the family of Gaddafi how can you ever think of reconciliation without a family of Gaddafi you're talking to the, to, the, to the Tripoli, Benghazi. You need to put everybody together so that they reconcile the country. Maybe the family of Gaddafi want to say, I'm sorry to the people. Maybe the people also want to say, I'm sorry. So that, that is the basis of the new uh, Libya we want to see from now. All right. What is your position uh, regarding Palestine and Israel? I, I think uh, when you talk to, uh, biblically, we have always, as a human being, we have... Uh, two positions. As a Christian who believe in God and who have uh, lived all my life to the mercy of God, I, I believe that uh, Israel, Israel is still relevant for me as a, as a man of God. But in the Joe context of politics, human rights of people of Palestine is an issue for me. So I still think yeah, specifically that... Specifically with regards to human rights. Specific mm -hmm. to uh, regard mm -hmm. to the uh, human rights. So I still think that uh, there is a conversation that we need to have when it comes to, uh, to the Palestine, which is not uh, for me. Because uh, I, I want to separate the, the, two, the mm -hmm. two parts. If you know where we come from, what defines us as a Christian, it's not about... Uh, uh, Netanyahu and it's about uh, our father. I, I, I always regard myself as an embodiment of David, Joseph, and Moses. Where do I get those one from if there's no Israel? And when I talk about that and God have mercy on them, why can't we have mercy on Palestine? But as, a, as, as somebody who's looking to be a leader of a country, you were speaking of African leaders wanting to, needing to have unity, unison in decisions that they make. What position would you want Africa to take um, with regards to that particular issue? They need to be on the side of the weak, which is Palestine. It's not negotiable. Mm. Because our life depends on where God is always for the weak. And we have to stand by the Palestine. Palestine. And that's why I told you my belief separate for what is the reality. Mm. You, you understand? Africa need to have a position on Palestine. Because, uh, you know, if there was no position on uh, 
ANC. There will not be a South Africa. There will not be ANC today. So I think that the position must be Palestine. But I know that I recognize Israel as a believer. As a believer. So you've got that, that conflict there. It's but, a as a, but, but as a leader, you, you have a, a position that you've taken. Yes. That's fine. Let's bring it a bit closer to home in Africa. The issue of West Sahara and, uh, and Morocco. West Sahara wanting to have their own autonomy. The African Union, um, I think they, they've now recognized them as the 50, 55th state of Africa. The issue of uh, uh, Sahrawi, I'm one of the people who have uh, worked uh, closely with uh, uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of uh, Morocco, uh, uh, Burita. I've uh, worked with them. Uh, I, I was able to, I was privileged to understand what is happening uh, over there. But uh, in terms of the Sahara issue, I don't know whether we are doing it right or not. I still believe that uh, we need to give chance to the people of Sahara to live. But uh, if you come to what I said at the beginning, do we allow small countries to, to live? These people in Sahrawi, they have passport of Algeria. Some other people have passport in the other side. Do you want them to suffer like that for 100 years? It's a decision the African Union need to make. You understand? Mm -hmm. And uh, it, this thing started with uh, uh, the late uh, Mama Gaddafi, started with some people, and uh, that thing is dead, dead still today. Morocco left, they came back. We fought for them here in South Africa. We fought for them. They have an ambassador which is left than one year. But uh, Morocco need to learn to be truth to himself in this situation. We need to blame all the parties. They need to be true to themselves. Not to try to reconvert the new generation of Africans to believe in them with lies. They need to find a way to integrate that in their policy. We embrace them, but we be still believe that there's a different way of looking at that issue. I said, small countries does not survive as an economist. It's going to be there. The people of, uh, of uh, Sahara, they, they live where? Where is their government? Why do we want to spend money on them? Till when? Is, is it ego issue? What do we do? Better, we don't want other people to use it for their own interests. That is what Africans have to say no to the two parties. You want to use it for your own ego? We don't want that. We want harmony. We want peace in the continent. That's what we need to expect. I've worked a lot with Algeria, the government of Algeria. And they, they, they are one of our pioneers. They give scholarship to the people in Benin. In our countries, what South Africa has never done. Algeria have done a lot for, for us. And, uh, but they, are, they never claim to be the giant of Africa. Do you, you, you understand? Mm. But uh, the new Africa we are looking at is a new generation who have a different kind of thinking. We want to have things differently. It's, uh, that's why I, I embrace uh, Julius Malema, who said that uh, Africa of tomorrow must not be the Africa we've seen. You know, people are still in government, they are more than 70 years. They are taking tablets of diabetics. <laughs> How can, can we expect them to think? After 65 years, we should not be able to run a government. It's a multi-tax function, which needs all your sense, all your mind, your ability to think. 24 hours. Right. As we wrap this conversation, uh, as we bring it to a close, um, you're speaking to people that are in Benin right now that are watching this program. What policies do you want to implement? What issues do you think, if you were to be elected, you would hit the ground running immediately? I think uh, the, the, the most uh, important uh, for us is that my people are suffering. And uh, the most important is that uh, to alleviate the poverty. That's key. You know, I just have a, uh, uh, I saw people, the, the, the teachers, the new government have removed them. They suspend them. Some of them were driving their motorbike to go and look for what to eat and they, they can't kill them. This is what I don't want to see. I want to give hope to my country. I think the greatest hope for them is me. And that hope is going to contaminate the whole region. I know if Africa is the gun, Benin is a trigger. I'll put that trigger. I'll, I'll, there will be an impact on the continent.
Well, thank you so much for speaking to us. Uh, we certainly appreciate it. All the best uh, next year as you run uh, for the presidential elections. We certainly will be following up that story and uh, giving our viewers a first class seat to the Benin presidential elections. Thank you, Madam. It's a great pleasure to be on your program. And I look forward to, to see you guys. And, uh, not only in South Africa, we want to see you all over the continent. Of course. Oh, well, well, we are live across the continent, uh, but perhaps we'll actually come to Benin to cover these uh, presidential elections. No, you'll come to cover our transition government transition. from this year. There's going to be a transition government right. this year. And uh, with that transition government, you are going to be invited. The European Union is going to be there. The ECOWAS is going to be there. Everybody is going to be there. And uh, you will be you'll be invited. Thank well, you. Well, we, we have you on record saying that, so you can't take that back. We'll hold you, <laughs> we'll hold you to that. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Uh, but in presidential, hopefully, uh, Mr. Ladislas Arbesi talking to us about issues, not only about Benin, but across, uh, the, uh, across the continent, saying the only hope that the continent has is unity. Of course, uh, we'll be leaving it there for now. Thank you for joining us and watching the program. Leave your comments uh, on our Facebook pages live as we speak, our Twitter handle at GUN underscore TV underscore mine is at Audrey Chimwanda. For myself and the team behind the uh, scenes, uh, have a good night.